Everything just like I told you, huh? Ah, uh, yes. Now, now, how about, how about a dress rehearsal? Here. The curtain is up. You're on the stage. Stay right there when I tell you. Now, now get ready for our song and dance. Are you all set? Now, one, two. Adore the name, admire the fame of Rupert. He's in a class alone, the one and only Rupert. He jumps rope so gracefully, and you ought to see him climb a tree. Think of an acrobat and mister, that is Rupert. Think of a ballet star, and you're not far from wrong. He taps his little toe and steals the show and takes your heart Along. Now we've got to do the dancing you wish. And it's got to be perfect. For everything depends on how we do it. Now, we all set? Here we go. <laughs> about 
monthly statement we will mail you. We feel it is hardly worth three cents to tell you you have two cents. Let's get going, huh? Look at all those lucky people hurrying home with arms full of packages. They'll have turkey for Christmas, packages under the tree, and Christmas trees for Santa. Oh, don't envy them, Rosalinda. But every one of them faced a Christmas like us at some time or another. And besides, it ain't Christmas yet. Who knows, old Saint Nick may have a bundle for us, too. The trouble is, we ain't got no address he can deliver him to. Amandola, the Amandola Trio. Joe, Joe Mahoney. Joe, darling. Now, now, don't tell me this is Mrs. Rosie. Yeah, she's certainly growing fast, a little too fast. Why, it seems like only yesterday I bought her them shoes, and already she's complaining they're too small. And with you, Amandola, how's the act been going? Huh? Great, sensational. Why, if I made me more money, I'd have to buy myself a wallet. <laughs> Something, Joe? No. We played the circus so many times just for a change. We booked the European tour. Europe? London, Paris, Budapest, and in India. We gave a performance the audience will never forget. Why? Because they were elephants. <laughs> oh, no, no. Please, a little respect for that joke that's older than you. <laughs> oh, sorry, Joe. You have to do it so good, aren't you? To tell you the truth, has been a little... You don't have to tell me. It's the same with us. We haven't much to cut our second teeth. Well, do you live around here? I do. Uh, I did. I just moved out less than a half hour ago. Oh, is the place rented yet? I don't think so. How much rent did you pay? I didn't. But if you got $32, you can move right in. How long did you live there without paying any rent? Six months. Just what we're looking for, something out of the high rent district. Joe, it's been good seeing you here, sir. And, and you must drop in and see us soon, Joe. Yes, yes, wonderful. Hey, wait, wait for me. Is that an option where it is? We ain't got no time. Oh, Joe. Where is it? 322 and a half Maple Street, just over there. Come on back, it's this way. Hey, wait for me! Merry Christmas! Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Pardon this unseemly protrusion, but that's the reason the shiner took the liberty of removing it. I don't think you're going to need it anymore. You want to rent this place? Well, we might work something out. If you don't drag lawyers into this. Well, you better speak to my father about it. He's right next door. Oh. Oh, I'm, uh, second thought. I can handle this myself. Come in. Be back in a minute. Don't go away. I'll be right back. 
Who was it? Oh, the, uh, the postman. Uh, it's for you. National Security Bank. Now, one of those chiselers was. Uh. What is it? Oh, it's just an advertisement. Mm. Katie. Whitewood's gold mine I invested in 10 years ago is paying off. Heavens, no. Look, here's a check for $1,500. And they say we're going to get the same amount each week from now on. Mercy. It's a day before Christmas, too, Frank. It's money from heaven. Yes. You should go to church and pray. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. But first, I'll go down to the bank and cash the check. I, I know that apartment isn't what you folks have been used to. But, you know, with a little paint and fixing it up, it's... Uh... You mean you're redecorating? Well, I... I'll speak to my father about it. Oh, and Mother's been having a little trouble with the stove. It's awfully old. Well, we'll see what we can do about that, too. Uh, maybe get you another one. A new stove! Uh, shh! Is there somebody asleep in there? Uh, my father. Oh. I mean, well, my father's a little reluctant about investing money. He has to be handled with kid gloves. Say, how about going for a walk? Not in these shoes, I wouldn't. They pinch my feet. Well, go get some others. I'll wait for you. It'll be a long wait. I ain't having any others. Oh. Well, what size do you wear? I'm dreaming of a size four. Why? Stay right where you are. Not a word of this, that soul, Katie. Uh, not anybody, especially that lazy son of yours. If he finds out about it, he'll blow that blasted tube of the rest of his life. Mom, what size shoe do you wear? Six, five. Oh, never mind. Now, don't you go buying shoes for me for Christmas, because I've got two pairs already. Isn't that nice of him? Not a nickel in his pocket, and he's still thinking of buying me shoes. Oh. Just for that, Frank, I want you to buy a nice necktie for him and put it under the Christmas tree. He likes those hand-painted ones. I saw some perfectly lovely ones for only five dollars. Huh. Five dollars, eh? I'll get some paint out of the attic and paint one myself. They call it the Amandola Trio, the human pyramid. Papa balanced Mom on his shoulders, and then I stood on top of Mom with all done up like a little angel. Sounds exciting. Then Papa juggled, Mama sang, and I played the harp. Music go over big. Only I started growing, Mama got heavier, and one day Papa's legs gave out. You mean he dropped you? <laughs> Four times in one week. The fourth time Mama broke her leg. We gotta hand it to Papa, though. He never broke a plate. He's a great juggler. Look, there's my father coming out of the bank. What he was doing in the bank. I've never been in a bank. Just to think of all that money in one place. We could go to price of the speed with seven dollars. Yesterday, four dollars. Now, what am I bid? Forty cents. Forty cents. Who make it a dollar? One dollar. I wish we were going to have a tree. Of course, with the moving and all. Talk enough about me. Tell me about you. Where do you work? I don't. All that is, I write music. Oh, does it pay? No. Then you don't work. Well, I don't have a job. Can't you find one? I've never looked for one. Well, what do you do for money? I don't need money. But suppose you were walking along with a girl and she wanted a, a malted milk, what would you do? Well, that would be pretty embarrassing. Oh, I'm sorry I said that to you. Come on, let's go home. All right, folks, there's two more left. Now, what am I fit for this one? Forty cents. A dollar and a half. A dollar and a half. Do I hear two? A dollar and a half once, a dollar and a half twice. Go to this gentleman for a dollar and a half. And now for the last three. All right, folks, it's your last chance. What am I bid for this one? Forty cents. Seventy-five cents. Seventy-five cents. Do I hear a dollar? A dollar? Will someone make it a dollar? Seventy-five cents once, seventy-five cents twice. A dollar. A dollar I've got. A dollar once, twice. Go to this gentleman for a dollar. Here you are, buddy. They missed it. Would it be all right if I pay you forty cents now and the balance later? Sure, sure. Just take the elevator up to the 18th floor. That's our credit department. This is a cash sale, buddy. Do you want the tree or don't you? Hey, wait! Look, you can have the tree. Give me the 40 cents. Oh, thanks. I'll pay you the rest as soon as I can. I'll give you a week. If you don't pay it up by then, I'll find out where you live and take the tree back. Seven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Why didn't you leave it at the bank while you were there? <laughs> at the bank? Katie, you're not serious after all that happened to our little savings in 1929. 
No, sir. They're never going to get any of my money again. I'm going to hide it right in this house. Cindy, you better run over to the church and say that little prayer now. Frank, you're sending me away because you want to keep the hiding place a secret from me. Oh, no, it isn't you, Katie. It's Pete. You're too soft-hearted with that boy. I'm afraid that What's the use of money, anyway, if you hide it? Money's for buying things, to enjoy life, to have some pleasure. Ah, that's a lot of hooey. Money is for security, not to worry about the future, to enjoy sleep. All right, Frank, I'm going. And I don't care if you stick that blasted money up the chimney and let it smoke till it smells like a ham butt. to find a job for a human pyramid. You're our only hope, so it's up to you. Please. It's Christmas. We haven't even got a tree. No money to buy some little gifts. Not even a pair of shoes for Rosalinda. She must have some shoes, Lord. She needs them real bad. Linda, 
you still play the harp? Sure, why? Well, I think I'll compose something just for the harp and tuba. And I'm going to call it The Melody of Two Orphan Infants. That's a cute title. You think they'll go together? I don't know. But I'm hoping. Anything. Papa, that was 22 years ago. I don't care if it was 100 years ago. I never trusted a guy with a tuxedo, especially a rented one. Oh, let Mom explain, Papa. No, the money didn't come from him. It came from... Here, Papa. You better sit down. Better loosen your collar, Papa. Rosalind, just bring Papa a glass of water. Papa, you love me, don't you? Of course I love you. And you trust me? You'd believe me if I told you something, wouldn't you? Even if nobody else in all the world would believe me, you would believe me, wouldn't you, Papa? Sure I would, Mama. Well, I was sitting right here in this chair, and I was playing. And, well, this money, $15,000, Come floating right down through the hole in the sunlight. Fifteen hundred dollars? From heaven? You do believe me, don't you, Papa? You said it. I've got to believe you. Oh, Merry Christmas, Papa. Merry Christmas, Papa. You see, Rosie? I told you old St. Nick wouldn't forget us. All we needed was an address. This perfume is lovely. It's dangerous. It's such a big bottle. It must have cost at least $10. Uh, it's not that dangerous. Uh -huh. Oh, this is a terrific tie, Dad. Thanks again. Did you see the watermelons, Mom? They're hand-painted. Now, who's that? Merry Christmas, young men. Merry Christmas. May we come in? Oh, why, of course. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Why, Mr. Amendola, we have the exact same ties on. It could be a lot worse if we were girls wearing the same dresses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mom, Dad, this is Mr. and Mrs. Amendola and their daughter, Rosalinda. How do you do? We're your new tenants. And the old tight season being upon us, we thought we'd drop in and pay you a visit. To pay what? A visit, Frank, a visit. Oh. Well, make yourself comfortable. Oh, do sit down, Mrs. Hammondola. I'm glad you brought your harp, Rosalinda. Can we sit right in here? Yeah. That's a nice tree you got there, Mr. Dingle. Where did you get it? Molinary? Uh-huh. Maybe we ought to go down there next week and make our payments together. Payments? Speaking of payments, Mr. Amendola, just what do you do for a living? Doesn't the name of Amendola suggest nothing to you? You surely must have seen us perform someplace. Florida in the racing season, Lake Placid in the winter season, or perhaps Africa in the malaria season. <laughs> yes, sir, Dingle. Someday you'll be able to say the Amendola's were your tenants. If I don't get my rent money, I'll be able to say that tomorrow. I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Dingle. Now, if you'll just hang your sock on a mantle, I'll drop in three months' rent. Keep the $4 change. Three months' rent in advance. 
Mr. Amendola, we're so glad you folks dropped in on us. Katie, get Mr. Amendola a chair. And some coffee and some cake, Katie. Where's the Christmas spirit? That's right. Where is the Christmas spirit? Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one-horse open sleigh. Ah, I love the excitement of Christmas. I'll never forget what Christmas Eve when I was a kid. I hung my stocking up on a mantle by the bed when I woke up the next morning. What do you think I found in my stocking? My father's foot. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. Another loud bush like that, Mr. Dingle, and I'll hide your electric train. <laughs> There's a guy going in business for himself. <laughs> Wait a minute. All together. Hey, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride on a one horse open sleigh. <laughs> this is wonderful. Now, isn't it a shame? That Christmas comes but once a year. Wouldn't it be nice if it came around twice? Spread hope and good cheer. Just when everyone forgets good will come in. That's the time for jingle bells to chime again. Now isn't it a shame that Christmas comes but once a year? Now isn't it a shame that Christmas comes but once a year? Wouldn't it be nice if it came around twice? Spread hope and good cheer. Mr. Dingle, this is going to develop into a long and beautiful friendship, even closer than Damon and Petelia. Now isn't it a shame that Christmas comes? Norris Rosalind that brought her hop along. Yeah. She didn't bring it to sliced hard boiled eggs. <laughs> All right, Rosalind. Here you are, Rosalind. Thank you. Oh, I finished the melody for two orphan instruments. Want to try it? Sure. Step over here, Pete. Okay. There you are. Yeah. Ready? Yes, uh huh. <laughs> around here we could rig up like a cedar board? Uh, a ski store? Yeah. Oh, I think so. A ski, ski store. How about a table leaf? You got one? Yeah. Go get it. Great. Now get me a glass of water. Thank you. 
simple. I told her to love Linda when she was only three years old. Now you get up in that chair. I'll stand down at this end, place the glass of water on my head, and when I say go, you jump down at that end. I will then do a back somersault, light a cigarette in midair, and land in that chair without spilling one drop of water. Ready? Ready. Go! Somebody important. Yes? Oh, uh, hello. I, uh, is Joe Mahoney home? Well, he's moved away. He has? Well, do you know where he went? Well, I'm afraid I don't. Oh, that's great. Well, what I do with this Christmas present I brought him? Here, it's yours. But go I, ahead. Go but ahead. I really don't. Him. Oh, it's just fruit and things. Uh, you live here? Yes. Alone? With my parents. Oh, well, that's nice. Uh, anything I can do for you? Well, my name is Phil Davis. I'm a friend of Joe Mahoney's, and I just... Phil dropped... Davis, the agent? Yes, that's me. Believe me, this is a pleasure. My name is Amendola. You've heard of the Amendola Trio, haven't you? You know, the human pyramid. Come in. Come in. Now, don't pay any attention to this apartment, Mr. Davis. You just moved in yesterday. Not much of a place, but for certain reasons, it fascinates me. Oh, Mr. Davis, take a look at this poster. You're gazing on one of the greatest vaudeville acts of its time. And uh, the only reason we disbanded is because of my little daughter's rapid maturity. Oh, yes, I can see what you mean. Oh, Mr. Davis, I was just thinking. I can work alone. Why, I can out-juggle anyone in the business. And you know something? I can juggle 25 plates with one hand. And with the other hand, I pick up the broken ones. <laughs> Just a little joke I use with the act. <laughs> now, if you give me your undivided attention. <laughs> Amandola never repeat twice. <laughs> well, that's very clever. I'll try and book you, Mr. Amandola. Sure, sure. Now, uh, how about you? About me? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to butt in, but the uh, coffee's ready. Oh. You know, a girl with your looks and figures should be in the limelight. And I'm just the man who can put you there. Said he is a squirrel with black mustache and eyes of uh, beauty. Who's he? Please. You were saying, Mr. Davis. Well, a girl like you should have a decent place to live. Not with help like this. What's good enough for my mother and father is... It's hardly good enough for a raising beauty like you. And Mr. Davis Please. here is just... Well, the coffee's ready. It's getting cold and so is the cake. I'm sorry. But Mr. Davis is a very important Broadway agent. Broadway sizzler. I beg your pardon. What was that? Oh, I know the type. 
Promises young girls expensive clothes, diamonds, furs, anything to make an impression. He didn't say those things, you did. Well, he was going to. How glad if he got to call me a chiseler. Why, he doesn't even know me. I think he's jealous. Well, maybe he's got a case. Say, it's uh, Christmas and I'm all alone. How about me taking you out to a Chinese dinner tonight? Well, I'm sorry, but I was up. Uh, I'd love to. Father, may I go out with Mr. Davis? You better ask your mother. Oh, thanks a lot. I had messed up when only four came down. This defies the laws of gravity. Check out of this town. Come to New York. Things can happen to you there, Rosie. Oh, let's not start that again, Phil. Oh, please. I'm crazy about you, Rosie. I'll do anything for you. Do you know any music publishers, Phil? Sure, dozens of them. Why? Well, uh, I wrote some music. I think it's beautiful. If you could take it well, to I some... didn't know you were a composer. <sighs> Melody for two orphan instruments by Peter Dingle. Who's Peter Dingle? Oh, well, you see, well, I put a man's name on it because I knew no one would even look at it if they knew a girl wrote it. Well, I'll see what I can do. If it's any good, I'll try and have it published. Oh, thanks a lot, Phil. Well, <laughs> night. Wait a minute. Uh, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Job. Well, uh, you want to start right now, or can you wait till tomorrow morning? I'm sorry. I was afraid somebody else might get it. You see, Mr. Haggerty, I need money. Hey, 
teeth. Yeah? Bend closer, laddie boy. For your ears alone. I got a sure thing in the sticks at California today. Cut me in on 40% of the winnings and I'll give it to you. This one can't lose. It'll win in a walk. Yeah, and while our horse is walking, the others will be running. If you have another hot tip, Mulligan, leave it under the plate. Yes, sir? What's your best cigar? Oh, I got some good ones back here. Quarter apiece. Quarter apiece? How much does a whole one cost? <laughs> Just a little joke. About as little as I've heard. <laughs> Hello. Hi. What'll it be? I'd, uh... I didn't know you worked here, Pete. Oh, well, that's strange. It was in all the papers. But you remember once you told me you were supposed to work. Sure. I even remember I couldn't buy a certain girl a cool drink in a drugstore. Now not only can I buy it, but serve it, too. What'll it be? Pete, you took this job on account of me. The girl I'm referring to only wanted a mold of milk. Shall we go now? Oh, it's you. Let's go, honey. I'd like a mold of milk, Phil. Not in this dump, please. Goodbye. So long. Look, Pete, you're missing a great bed. That filly's sure to wind up in the money. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. How's that for a bargain? Only $49.50. But, Papa, what do we want with a polar bear rug? This isn't an ordinary polar bear. Just watch. All you gotta do is twist the tune and... Music is sold to a radio. Oh. You gotta tune it for short wave. But we don't need it. Sure we do. It lends an air of quality to the place. Mama. What's a real home without a polar bear? But we must stop buying things. That $500 you have left has got to last. Oh, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. You know that Mr. Byfield who we bought these few pieces of furniture off? Well, I stopped by there today to look at the little piano we were talking about. And you know something? He isn't doing so well. Oh, Papa, I hope you didn't. It's not his fault that business is bad. Naturally, with the banks leaning on the place and no one to try to. five hundred dollars. Oh, Papa, all our lives you've been doing this. Whenever we get a little ahead, you meet someone who's in trouble and you just melt like chocolate in a baby's hand. I couldn't help it. He needed it. But, Mama, we got nothing to worry about. We still got that hundred dollars I gave you yesterday. No. I mailed that money away for the unpaid bills we left in Chicago. That puts us right back where we were a week ago. That's right. All you gotta do is do what you did a week ago. Pray. Well, I am praying every hour of the day, but if it's more money you want me to pray for... Why not, Mother? It's worth a try. Well... Well, I... I just wouldn't have the nerve to ask again. Besides, it's selfish. But Papa just told us he helped somebody with it. That wasn't selfish. And besides, all you gotta do is ask and let heaven make up its own mind. Well, even if I could remember the prayer... You must remember, Mother, the same thing you said before. Well, I don't know. All I recall saying is that Rosalinda needs shoes, but now she doesn't need shoes. She has four pair already. But, Mama, when you say she needs shoes, that doesn't mean she really needs them. It's like stage hands in the theater playing dice. A guy says, baby needs a new pair of shoes. That doesn't mean she needs them. It's just a disfigurement of speech. Mm, all right. Bring me the little old rocker. I'll get it. I was sitting in it when it happened. Say it, Mama. Say it. Please help us. Rosalinda needs shoes. She needs them real bad. No, 
use, Mama. The prayer won't be answered. Maybe it has been answered. The answer is no. Well, let's wait till anyhow. I guess I'd better take the drug back to the shop. and cake, Miss Armandola. Thanks. Oh, and here's the check. You are share of all profits for this month. Well, well. You cast your dough upon the waters, it circulates, and it comes back strawberry shortcake. Thanks, partner. Thank you, Miss Armandola. Who was it, Papa? Petrushka, our baker. Oh, Mama. Look. This is our share of the month's profits. Oh. How much did we decide to contribute to buy shoes for European children? Six hundred dollars. Why? Well, deposit this, and we can make it a thousand. Oh, that's fine. I'm telling you, it's all over town. This Amandola character gave $1,025 for kids' shoes. She lives in a stable and faces a straw. The guy doesn't work. It don't add up. Where did you get the money? He's $2,500 for European children. What line of business is he in? Nobody knows. We don't have a product. Local man gives profits to charity. We don't have a product. When they moved in, they didn't have a nickel to their name. Two months later, he buys a shipload of shoes for farm kids. Now, how do you figure that? I'd like a super duper. Triple Decker, Banana Delight. Coming up. You know what I think? He's printing his own money right there in that sack of yours, Mr. Dingle. Well, I hate gossip, but I just heard from a friend of mine whose wife told him, and she swears it's true, that Amadola is a big gangster in hiding. And if I was you, Mr. Dingle, I'd notify the police right away. Notify the FBI. I saw it in the movie. Someone should write them an anonymous letter. Sure, write anonymous letter. Report him to the police. Put him in jail. The guy has to be punished because he has a big heart. Oh, pipe down, Pete. I told you never to argue with the customers. Sorry. I think it's all a lot of hooey. You know what I heard? A man comes to see the pretty Armandola girl every day in a big car. We can't hear you. Louder. A man comes to see their daughter every day in a big car. That's true. He's a Broadway agent. What about him? 
Like a little uh, strawberry? Sure, sure. He's the individual that floods Amendola with money on account of that girl. Some whipped cream. Love that. That's what I say about actors. People like the Amendolas can contaminate a whole community, just like one rotten apple in a barrel. <laughs> What'd it be? Bourbon and water. Hi, Pete. Oh, hi. Say, I had dinner at the drugstore. And I heard you push a chocolate sundae into a perfectly good customer's kisser. Is it true? No, it was a banana delight. You're hurt, Pete. Who hurt you, boy? Nobody. I just counted my money, and I discovered I was 16 cents short of my first million. That makes me sad. Listen, Pete. If you're open for a proposition, I know how to make some real dough. Get this. A friend of mine... Look, Eddie, why don't you make like a ballerina and dance away? Here, stick this in the jukebox and play something loud. A friend of mine is drilling for oil in California. He's down 9,000 feet. That's 500 more to go. So now, now it's oil time. Don't you ever give up, Mulligan? But Pete... She can grab yourself 20% interest and become a millionaire in no time. Are you out of your mind? Where would I get $2,000? How about asking your old man? Oh, don't be ridiculous. My father gets a small pension. He's very happy if he can make ends meet. That's what you think, Junior. My brother-in-law, who happens to be a policeman at the bank, says that old man of yours has been cashing pretty large checks for weeks now. Oh, wait a minute. I did see him coming out of the bank once. He gets a letter from them every week. You see? All you have to do is ask him to back you. What father could refuse such a proposition? Tell me, Mulligan. Is this really on the level? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll introduce you to my friend. He'll show you the papers. And besides, he'll give you all the security you want. I'll see you tomorrow. There must be a screw loose in your head. Who's got 2,000? What 2,000? Pa, I know you have it. You've been seen in the bank cashing large checks lately. That's a lie. Now get out. I don't want to hear any more about it. But I'll pay you back. I'll repay you 10 times over. But I haven't got it, I tell you. I haven't got it. Pa, you must give it to me. You simply must. Get out, you crazy fool. Get out before I break that blasted tube over your head. Get out. Not enough. Two 
$2,000 was more luck than I dare hope for. And we might be able to do something about it. A marriage license only costs two dollars. Yeah, but how could we live? We could walk. How? By putting windows in my tuba and converting it into a concert hut? My mother and father didn't have a penny when they were married. And Papa said that that was the happiest time in their whole lives. Very true. Yeah, that's great. But I can't even juggle. You have to take that up the first thing in the morning. Why must we have two thousand dollars? It's an oil deal, and it might come in. And then again, it might not. But if it did, ah, oh, what's the use trying to dream my way out of this? Hmm. Maybe Papa could lend you the money. Maybe. But two thousand dollars? You can ask him. I'm sorry, Rosalinda. I'm superstitious about borrowing money that comes from heaven. Yes, gentlemen. We're not the 
together. I'm Lieutenant Saunders, police. I'm looking for a man named Louis Amendola. That's me. I'm Inspector Saney, Bureau of Internal Revenue. May I come in? Sure. Sure. I don't know, unless I've been burned in the incinerator after hours. Gentlemen, this is my wife. Well, uh, now all we need is the FBI. Oh, pardon me. Callahan, FBI. Are you Mr. Amendola? Yes, sir. Won't you come in? Thanks. Me and my big fat mouth. Mr. Amendola, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Do you mind? Not... I was here first. Mr. Amendola, the Department of Internal Revenue would like some information regarding your source of income. What is it, huh? We got a report. Please. You... May I? We have a report showing you've been spending large sums of money, the source of which is not indicated in your previous income tax report. We're a little curious, Mr. Amendola, to know where the money's coming from. We saved a lot when we were the human pyramid. And I took that money and I invested it wisely. I'll have you know that I've majored in economics at Cranford College. Cranford? I never heard of that college. Why, that's like saying you never heard of Joe Chumpkus. Who's he? He's the president of Cranford. Mr. Amendola, we're not interested in your education. We just want to know where you're getting the money. All right, gentlemen. I'll tell you the truth. I'm the long lost son of a very wealthy typhoon. When I was only two days old, a nurse turned her back while I was making a change, and I was stolen from the cradle by a band of starving gypsies. And a few months ago, the king of the gypsies came and told me who my father was. the beach digging with my pail and shovel, when suddenly my shovel struck the top of an iron-bound chest. Pirate's treasure, eh? That's right. That does it. Look here, Amendola. You've been reported for everything from swiping tires off of baby carriages to operating your own mint. Now, what's your racket? Please leave him alone. Why can't we tell him the truth, darling? It's so simple. All right, lady. What is the truth? Where does the money come from? From... Explains everything. But it's the truth. It comes straight from heaven. Fifteen hundred dollars every week. On the dot. I like the one about the pirates just better. Come on, Amandola. Let's get on and tell it to the boys at the station. But I can prove it. I can prove every word. Now, of it. Mrs. Amandola, how can you prove it? It's easy. I put this old rocking chair in the middle of the room. Sit down there and say a little prayer. And when I say. Rosalinda needs shoes. The money comes down like rain. All right, Mrs. Amendola, show us. Pull up the chair and say the prayer. Wait a minute. She can't do it today. The miracle happens on Thursday, between 3 and 3.30. All right, we'll be here Thursday at 3. Thursday at 3.
just a mile an hour. It wouldn't be better, Mrs. Dingo. More orders than we can take care of. Come on, Katie, let's go. Clever man, that Amadora. Pretty soon, he'll own the whole town. You could have done the same thing if you'd invested your money instead of hiding it. Mark's the Amadora garage. Look, look at that. No, I won't look. And don't stop every second. I'm getting tired of this thing. You know what I'm going to do? I am going to raise Amendola's rent again, as of today. Come on. Right. Due to the increased cost of living, I must raise the rent of this place. Again? This is the eighth time you've raised the rent since we moved in, Mr. Dingle. You're forcing me to join Landlords Anonymous. Well, you can move out if you want to. Let's not be too hasty, Mr. Dingle. You might be right. Maybe the cost of living has increased. I would know I haven't done today's shopping yet. Uh, how much more do you want? Thirty dollars. Thirty dollars, one hundred twenty-five dollars a month. Why, it's robbery! Well, if you think that, you can start packing right now. Oh, he didn't mean that, Mr. Dingle. Of course not. I apologize, Mr. Dingle. Why, for only one hundred twenty-five dollars a month, where else could you find a place where the sunshine comes streaming through the keyhole all day? You're right. You can't take advantage of me like you've been doing with a lot of bankrupt shop owners. Now look here, Dingle. I only helped those fellas out because no one else would. And besides, I'm not making money on all those investments. For instance, your son's Earl venture. I'll surely lose the 2000 I invested in that. You deserve to. He couldn't take me for his sucker. I wouldn't give him a nickel. If you did, you'd probably shortchange him, you tight old buzzard. Oh, that's done it. Another word out of you, and I'll punch you in the nose. Why, I'll let... Oh, Papa, stop them, Mr. Dingle. Why, you two should be friends. If only for our children's sake. They love one another. Oh, who knows, they might get married someday. Oh, no son of mine will ever marry a girl with your daughter's reputation. Now, why, get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Some nails and glue. I'll fix it. Hurry. It's almost time to pray. We are sorry to inform you. Katie, Katie, Katie. Yes, Frank? Our gold mine is exhausted. There'll be no more checks in. Uh -uh. <laughs> Let's get going, Amador. It's almost 3.30. Okay. All right, Mama. Linda needs shoes. Oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, a little patience. Fifteen hundred dollars is a lot of money. Sometimes we've got to ask twice. Try it again, Mama. Try it again. Rosalinda needs shoes. You're right, Mama. It seems the miracle is over. <laughs> I threw away fifteen hundred dollars a week when I threw this chair. It's not the chair. We have no excuse to ask for anymore. You're right, Mama. But we're doing all right now. There's a lot of poor people playing in this world. Now it's their turn for miracles. moving out of this shack the first thing tomorrow morning. Now, even my cigarettes don't come down. I'm afraid you're not going to have to wait till the first thing tomorrow morning. You're beginning to move now. Down to the station. Not so fast, Lieutenant. This is a tax matter. We 
goes with me. Wait a minute, both of you. I don't know what kind of a matter this is, but he's going with me for general questioning. You can question him at the station house. I don't want to question him at your station house. I want to question him at my field office. I don't care where either one of you question him. Right now, he's going with me. Over my broken and splintered body, he is. I have no objection to taking him over your broken and splintered body. What do you think of that? Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's have cooperation. Let him go with me. Oh, it's nothing, Mr. Linda. These gentlemen don't quite understand where we're getting our money from. So I'm going downtown and explain it. You stay here with Mother. Is there anything I can do, Mr. Amazon? Oh, yeah. Pardon me for a moment, will you? Look, Pete, I don't know how long I'm going to be gone. Kind of keep an eye on things around here till I get back, will you? Oh, sure, sure. But this trouble, is it serious? There's nothing to it. <laughs> with time off for good behavior, I may only get your life. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, whose car do I go in? Mine. Oh, no, no wait. I didn't say it. I smell smoke. So do I. But, Dad, Mr. Amazola's in serious trouble. Maybe the $2,000 would help him. You've got to give it. As you should, Frank. As all, if Mr. Amazola helps me. Help him how? To make an idiot out of himself by giving him $2,000 for that crook Belligan. I won't do it, I tell you. I won't give Amendola one penny. Let him fry in his own back. He belongs to jail anyhow. But, Dad, this is important. Frank, you're just a hard-hearted, money-hearted. Tell it to him. I'm going upstairs where I don't have to listen to either one of you. Knows he deserves a crack, Jingle. Are we insured, Paul? Heck no, those chiselers don't get any of my money, no, sir. Good heavens, I'm not insured. <laughs> you have a very smart father. He trusts nobody but the hole behind the bed. Oh, Pete, I'm so glad you're all right. Thousands of dollars burning right now. Brand new, crisp hundred dollar bills. He put in the hole behind his bed. Every Thursday, fifteen hundred dollars. Now it's all gone. <laughs> Rosalinda needs shoes, huh? Now pull yourself together, Mr. Jingle. I'll rebuild the house. It'll be better than new. If you will. I don't know what to say. Oh, it's perfectly all right, Mrs. Jingle. Why, anything to help a good neighbor. The way I see it, now this is very definitely only a tax matter. It makes things much simpler. What do you mean, Susan? Who owes the tax? Amandolo is his other guy. Well, naturally, but... Hmm? Guess Amandolo. I don't know. They both had income. Maybe they both owe it. Well, how do you figure? It was this other fellow's income. Sure. Amandolo was only innocently using the other guy's money. Who's like a gift? In that case, this man not only owes income tax, but he'll have to pay his gift tax, too. As far as I'm concerned, the local law is no longer interested. Looks like it's out of my jurisdiction, too. It's too involved for me. I'm going to forget all about it till March 15th. 
What'd you find? Nothing but a dead squirrel. Why, he isn't dead. He's just overcome by smoke. That's all he needs is a little fresh air. I wonder what he was doing in the house. That's a place for a little squirrel to be. <coughs> My good old Rupert. Oh, you haven't changed a bit. You smell a little smoky, though. Now tell me, how was it? How did the other squirrels treat you? You were they good? Oh, oh, I've got good news for you. I got a job with the circus. We start in two weeks in Hoboken. Me and two seals. <laughs> Mrs. Jingle. Mr. Amendola. <laughs> For your new home, Mrs. Jingle. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Papa. Take your seat, Papa. Oh, uh, Mr. Jingle. Like a caterpillar has its cocoon. Like a bird has its nest. Like the worm has its, uh, apple. Believe me, it's a pleasure to present you with the key to your new home. Mr. Amendola. You're the finest, the noblest, the most generous... Oh, I wouldn't say that, Mr. Jingle. But I'm glad he did. I'm overwhelmed. I can't find words enough. To... Words, words. What are words? If it'll make you any happier, Mr. Jingle, I'll even carry you across the threshold. Thank you, Mr. Amendola. <laughs> you like it. My little wife crocheted the Durleys, but I'll have to take credit for the curtains. I would have done a much better job, only my pink and sheets were dull. Thief! Mulligan. Why, you dirty oh, dog. No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me go, please. Let me go. We're rich, Pete, rich. The island's coming like a geyser. What? The wall came in. Yeah. Rosie, come down here, quick. The melody for Two Orphan Instruments by Peter Dingle. You did this, Rosalinda. You see, Dad, what I mean about taking a risk? Taking a risk, 
When are you going to ask me to marry you? Right now. Rosalinda. Oh, please. Oh. Amandola, my friend. Single old pal. <laughs>